kind of find my mute button there. Um, all right, so we've we've covered you know what the value is of, of these interlinks, but what use would it be if we didn't help you guys figure out how to actually apply these you know best practices across your site and kind of explain some of the the ways that you can leverage internal links the best way on your websites. Um, the first thing to remember with all of this is that this is a framework to help you. It is not going to lead to penalties if you don't follow this framework. Um, these are just some of the best practices that you can keep in mind as you're building your internal link strategies. And you know this will really help set you up for success so you're truly harnessing the full value of um, internal linking. And one way that you can do that is with the I care framework. So we'll start with intent, which is the I in I care. Um, you're, you want to make sure that you're giving readers exactly what they expect. Um, honestly, as a content producer, I know that sometimes the element of surprise is great for storytelling, um, but when it comes to interlinking, that's not the case. You want your users to expect what they're clicking on. So looking at this example, uh, strong customer relationships lead to better brand loyalty. And in this example, we're looking to a guide on how to build customer relationships. Um, this makes sense for the users. They want to understand, okay, well, what is a strong customer relationship? So now they're going to click on this and they're going to dive in a little bit further. Not so great example of this is strong customer relationships lead to better brand loyalty. So the same sentence, but instead we're linking out to our CRM software solution page where a user is going to land on this page and be encouraged to buy a product that they're not ready to purchase yet. So they're a little confused as to why they're on this product page because they still need to go back and figure out like how to build customer relationships. Intent kind of ties right into this next one, the C of eye care, and that's context. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you're thinking of context as the words surrounding the inner link that you're placing. And this is where you want to make sure that you're not matching keywords, you're matching context. Just because you're mentioning a keyword that is an anchor page for a text on your site does not mean that that is the place that you should be linking to it or that you should even be linking to it in you know, the article that you're writing. It all depends on the context. So for example, put your audience at the center of your SEO strategy. The context around this link suggests that what I'm about to click on is going to give me a guide on how to put people at the center of my SEO strategy or more details on developing my strategy. So this is a great example. And the wrong or not so great example, we are talking about a specific brand. So we're saying Birdie's SEO strategy is built around topic clusters. The SEO strategy link here doesn't really make sense. Uh, the context around it does not lead me to believe that I'm about to click into a how-to guide. Um, it maybe suggests that I might look at something closer that is specific to Birdie. Um, maybe in this instance, you would not link to SEO strategy. And maybe there's something you could link to on your site around topic clusters instead, because here's where you can learn a little bit more about what those are and the context surrounding that link leads you to believe that. And back to the anchor text discussion, um, anchor text tells a, a really rich story about what the page is about, what you're linking to, the intent behind the page, uh, whether it's informational or definitional or something that somebody wants to purchase. Um, so use, using the right anchor text is critical. And I would recommend you, you pull your anchor text from the keywords you want a page to rank for. So if you've done your keyword research and you've got a list of 50 terms that you think this page should rank for because the, the top ranking website ranks in, so let's say um, has uh, 50 of these keywords that rank in the top three for that page, you know it's possible, you know you can get there. So I would pull your list of anchor text from those keywords for um, both for internal links and for backlinks uh, in this case. So as one example, you have a sentence, if you publish health content, you need to know what EAT is. So in this case, what is EAT is the target keyword. The article is about what EAT is. It explains how Google's expertise, authority, and trust is uh, critical for SEO and explains how it works a little bit. And in the second example, the, the not as good example, we have this the same sentence, but we've shifted the anchor text to public uh, publish health content. And in that case, the page isn't about publishing health content, so it doesn't make as much sense. 
Uh, and I think sometimes this happens because um, folks get a little bit timid about using keywords in anchor text. They, because of the fear of getting a penalty, they start to think, well, I, I better mix it up. I've used a lot of keywords in, in anchor to this page. I, I really shouldn't do that. So I'm just going to you know, shift it to something that doesn't make as much sense. This is why we often see generic anchor, like click here and naked URLs, because people are trying to um, sort of dilute the uh, the keywords that they're linking to pages with, but not not a concern as we'll get to a little bit later as well. But um, I would bring us down to the next uh, relevance, which is kind of um, similar to what we were talking about before um, in terms of context. But in this case, I'm I'm talking about adding links where they're most relevant in the con in the content itself. I know there's a lot of information out there that's old that still says. Um, add links higher, the first link on the page is the most valuable, it's not true. Um, so add them you know, higher up on the page because the first mention or whatever, at the, and don't just ignore that because that's not where Google is these days. Um, Google's thinking about user experience and about context and relevance. And so in this case, um, the, uh, the right way to add this would be as if you have a whole sub subsection, let's say an H2 or an H3, that's all about one particular topic. And you mentioned that, that keyword multiple times, you were mentioned related entities uh, to that uh, keyword in that topic. That's where you want to add the link. It'll provide the most value. Uh, whereas in the wrong example, I don't, you know, as Angela said earlier, this isn't about you're going to get a penalty or this isn't a, this isn't a terrible example. It's just, which is the best way to do this? If you mention something multiple times, just adding it randomly, even if it's contextually relevant, even if um, the everything makes sense, but there's a better place for it, add it in the best place possible. It's where users expect to find it. And it's um, it's got more signals of relevance packed into it for search engines as well. And uh, in this case, I'm going to break the rules that we just mentioned a little bit. Sometimes you're going to have pages that have a lot of authority that have just inherited a ton of backlinks, whether you built them or not. Um, they just have a lot of juice to pass along. And maybe there isn't a lot of content on the page. Maybe there's, uh, maybe it's an infographic heavy page. If you can add some content to it to, to in, um, in order to link out, do so always make the page better. Um, in, in any case, if you mention a word once on the page and it has a ton of links, uh, link juice to pass along, then I would say as long as it's, it's, you know, it's relevant and it doesn't, it doesn't feel odd or out of place, I would add the link, even if you've only mentioned a word once, if there's a lot of authority to pass on. So um, this is just sort of an extra step to think about. Um, the other rules are all about the context and the relevance. And this rule is about, hey, this page has a lot of juice to pass along, so don't waste it. Now, if you liked this ClearScope webinar snippet, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe so you don't miss out on more great tips and strategies from the industry's best SEOs and content marketers. Make sure to check out the ClearScope YouTube channel for more great content.